Well, welcome to our third installation of uh, Faith Mountain's DTS, or Discipleship Training School, and where we're talking about friends, allies, and enemies. Um, and so I wanted to start today, we, we've been talking about friends for the last uh, couple lessons. Um, today, we're going to talk about allies, but I want to end, or I want to kind of go back, I want to go to Proverbs 18, verse 24. Um, today, we're going to, I'm going to be in the NIV, and it says this, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And so I think it's really important that we understand and kind of distinguish what it looks like for friends, friends that are going to have your back no matter what. They're with you, you know, day in and day out. This friend, and I had always heard this taught as Jesus being that, that friend that sticks closer than a brother. But we also have to have friends. And so Proverbs says, if you have unreliable friends, it's going to bring you to ruin. But if you have that friend that sticks closer to a, than a brother, then you have someone that will walk with you, regardless of whether they agree necessarily with the things that you're doing. Um, so today we're going to talk about allies. Um, allies are, if you look that definition up, it means to unite, to form a connection, a relationship with, to form or enter into an align, allegiance, an agreement to help each other by treaty or by league. In other words, friends that are closer than a brother are going to walk with you through anything. But allies are someone that we need to have a common vision. We need to have something that's going to work that benefits both parties, right? And so we're going to look at um, allies today, and I'm going to kind of do a little explanation about why we think this is so important in this, this time. But I want to start... In Matthew, verse uh, chapter 12, verse 30, Jesus has something very interesting to say in verse 30 when he says, Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so we need to make sure that we understand that we're talking about the body of Christ right, um, where we identify friends and allies and enemies. Uh, but the world will be a part of that too. But Jesus says, if you're not for me, you are against me. And if you're not with me, you're, you're, if you're not uh, gathering with me, you are literally scattering uh, the things that I'm trying to do. So it's, it's really important that we understand uh, who our allies are. Uh, an example of, of allies would be America and Israel. Once Israel became a nation, obviously America came alongside her, and, and we've walked with her for uh, since her inception in 61, 67. Um, we need to continue to pray that we keep that allegiance, but we do know that prophecy tells us that there's a day coming when every nation will turn against Israel. So we need to pray for our leaders, but it that's a picture where the U.S. has come together, not just for political reasons, but spiritually, uh, at least in the past, America has stood with Israel because the Bible tells us to do that. So it takes a common vision to have an ally that's willing to come in and, and work with you and stand with you. It takes a common vision that's bigger than just one or two of you. Um, and so we want to talk about that today. Uh, I really questioned... Uh, I didn't question him, but I wasn't really sure when the Lord spoke to me last fall about identify your friends, your allies, and your enemies. I really didn't know what that I was like. What does that look like? Why are you know what are we what are we preparing for? And as we you know talked about and we we prayed and gone through this last season, um, what we realize is the leadership of Faith Mountain, and you've probably already heard some about this, but we believe. Um, as we were talking about in a sermon not long ago about how the birth pains in Matthew 24, he tells us they're going to get uh, more intense and closer together, right? And, and the calamities and the tragedies and those sorts of things are coming. Um, so we believe that God is calling Faith Mountain 
to begin to prepare um, a strategy, a strategic plan to be able to help people and to help other areas like we saw in Mora a couple years ago, we saw in Rio Dosa this last summer where uh, terrible tragedies came about and there's always a church that steps up. And we believe that Faith Mountain is that church, not just to work here in Red River, not to work by ourselves, but actually to help unite the churches around the region so that, say, Cuesta had a serious you know, calamity or tragedy down there, a fire or a flood or whatever, uh, the other surrounding regions and the churches would step up and we would have a plan and a strategy to be able to reach out and help minister to the people, not just physically, but also spiritually. And so it starts with us, you know, and we're, we're looking at Nehemiah today. Uh, so we're going to be over in Nehemiah chapter six here in just a minute. But it starts with the body of Christ here, Faith Mountain. We're, we're asking you to come on board with us and to buy into this 100%. We don't believe God had us uh, spend that much money on a generator, you know, so we could have service or power on Sunday morning. We believe God is preparing us, and we believe as these, these end times continue to increase that the calamities and the tragedies and things are going to increase, and the body of Christ is, needs to be ready to step up and be that light and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so that's, I believe that's why the Lord is preparing us and asking us to identify friends and allies and enemies. So we're going to talk a, about Nehemiah. Uh, look over at chapter 6 in Nehemiah, Nehemiah, excuse me. And remember in Nehemiah that um, when Nehemiah heard of the, the condition of Jerusalem and how the city walls were torn down and stuff, um, how he began to seek God. And the first thing he did was he began to pray and seek God for how he could be a part of the solution in um, seeing the, the walls in the city rebuilt. Um, so it started with prayer. Uh, he had to have favor from the king, right? He had to have favor to be able to go and to have the provisions that he needed. Um, but when he got there and he began to survey, he started building a strategy. First thing he did was walk around, not tell anybody what he was doing and seek God. Then he brought in the leaders um, in Jerusalem and began to share with them what the Lord was showing him. And then he began to bring people in from the region, the Jews from around the region to come alongside and help. And it took all of them buying in together to be able to accomplish this. So Nehemiah chapter six starts out in verse 15 and it says, so the wall was completed on the 25th of Elu in 52 days. Now, I want you to stop and think about this. The city is totally destroyed. You know, most of the people are gone. There's a remnant there. Um, and they were able to come together in unity with the Lord's help and to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem uh, in 52, 52 days when they were enemies doing everything they could to stop them and to destroy them. And so it was a supernatural move of God to be able to do that. So verse 16 says, when all of our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. And so we want to take a look at two different things here in these two verses. First of all, we want to look at how Nehemiah and the people of Israel were able to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Um, well, again, he had a strategy. He went, he started with prayer. He had a strategy. He had favor with the king. And he began, as he built this strategy and got more and more people to buy into this, um, then he began to go out to the farther regions and get allies. And that's exactly what we believe God is calling us to do right now as far as preparing for these natural disasters. I believe that we're going to see some opposition to this. Uh, I believe that there's going to be enemies when they realize that this is the work of God and that we're trying to build something and, and get something 
prepared so that when there are tragedies, <clears throat> instead of chaos and confusion, <clears throat> excuse me, there'll be unity in the body of Christ, and we will see people's lives change forever. So the first thing is that they had a plan and a strategy. Uh, they accomplished it through unity um, to be able to complete this, supernaturally complete this work in 52 days. The other part is when the enemies heard, Realize what it says here is the nations were afraid and the, they lost their confidence because they realized this work had been done with the help of our God. So we realize there's going to, the enemy is going to be coming against us. I believe that this is way bigger than anything we can think or imagine. As we get closer and closer to the tribulation uh, and the return of Christ, um, I believe that this is a work that can last well beyond uh, our lives and our time here on earth. And, but there's going to be enemies. The enemy is going to do everything he can to confuse and divide and, you know, to stop this work. And so we want to be prepared. So we want to identify those, those allies. And so we're, we're going to slowly begin to go out into the region and talk to the local churches first. Uh, we'll be talking to different entities like EMS and fire and stuff and working in in conjunction with them, but we also want to make sure that we are prepared to meet the spiritual needs of people that maybe have lost their homes, their loved ones, their, their property, their jobs that are hopeless. We want to start to equip the body of Christ to be able to minister to those people. So it's kind of a two-part um, plan or strategy is physical needs and spiritual needs. So, there were three things that they needed to accomplish um, in verse 15. And in your groups, I want you to, to identify at least three different things that had to, to be accomplished for them to be able to do this supernatural work of God. So sit down, talk about that. Um, that's one of the, one of the talking points uh, today. Um, it started with prayer, favor with the king, had help from the other Jews in the surrounding regions. What are some of the other things that had to take place for this to come together and to work together? Um, and then as we come into alliance with our allies, we need to be able to, we need to understand, we need, this needs to be crucial. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We have to be under the authority of the Holy Spirit, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We've got to stay in line with God's word and we've got to walk in unity. Jesus is our king, and he's calling us to do this. So we can't do that without walking according to this, the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do this in our own power. And so we're, we're calling you to come alongside with us. Um, we're preparing for a battle that we believe is going to be significant in seeing our region change for Christ. Um, so as you guys break into groups today, uh, your leaders will maybe talk a little bit about this strategic plan that we're working on. Um, look at the things. Remember that Jesus Christ is saying, if you are not with me, you are against me. If you're not sowing with me, you're scattering the work. And so we need to be able to identify, we need to talk about how do we identify our allies? Those people that have a common vision, that that come together and say, yes, we want to be a part of this work. We want to be a part of, of what the Holy Spirit is doing. And as I've been praying and meeting with other leaders, we believe, I, I hear their heart for the unity of the body coming together. And we all have a sense of something really big coming down the road. So understanding who our allies are and understanding that we have to clearly be able to communicate that what this bigger vision is for our region. We've always been called and always been prophesied as a refuge. And so what does that mean in the coming days? Well, the Lord is the only one that knows for sure, but we're asking you to join with us. We're asking you to talk today about this. Um, friends, they've got your back, right? They're going to walk with you no matter what. Allies, they need to have a common vision. They need to, there needs to be a benefit for both sides. And then obviously we'll be looking at enemies down the road. So I pray blessings over your time together and God bless you.